How's it, guys? Um, <laughs> I'm Sia Kalisi. Um, and, ma'am, that was really beautiful. That is actually my favorite song in the world. That's really what, um, that's how I'm going to be remembered as well. Um, I'm going to share a bit about my life, about where I'm from, and, and what got me to this day. Um, I'm really honored. Uh, thank you, Pastor Phil and Lawrence, for having me here. Pastor Lucinda, uh, my favorite. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was born in PE in uh, 1991. Um, I think my mom was 15 then, and my dad was, I would think, about 20. And obviously, my, my mom's family said she was way too young um, to, to, to raise me and look after me. So she dropped me off at the front gate of my dad's school while he was writing exams. So he had to leave his exam and, and pick me up, and then he took me home. Um, to my grandmother, um, who raised me. I was raised by my grandmother. And we, we went a very privileged um, family, um, as a lot of my neighbors as well, or, you know, in my community were struggling a lot. Um, my dad was obviously young, and he left um, while I was still young to Cape Town, and my grandmother was working in the kitchen, and she had to stop after a while. So I was struggling to get meals um, during the day. And she used to go visit her friends. And you know, if you go visit other people in the township, they make you coffee and give you a little bit of cookies and maybe um, the, the bread. And she, my grandmother would just take, take the bread, put it in a pocket, bring it home for me to eat. And yeah, that was my, my, my life every day. I loved going to school because we get um, bread at school. We used to get, at, at lunchtime, you get like a, a slice of bread um, with, with peanut butter in it and jam and powdered milk, um, you just put water in it. And you know, that was my, probably most of the days, my only meal of the day. And, um, but um, throughout all of that stuff at home, my, my grandmother, all she could give me was love and time. And I think that's all I needed at the time, you know? And I really appreciated that more than anything else. It's something I wanted for my dad, from my dad, but he wasn't there. And in the township, um, the people that you look up to the heroes for you in the township where I was from is drug dealers, people. Uh, my dad used to smoke weed as well. My uncle smoked weed. My neighbor smoked weed. And my other neighbor also smoked weed. My dad was an alcoholic. And my dad used to ab ab abuse my mom when I was young. I think I was five years old. I used to watch this. I remember the one day walking in the street and playing with my friends and picking up my mother's teeth in the corner of my street and you know at that age already I knew this wasn't right because my mom wasn't happy I used to cry to see this and that day I made myself a promise I said I will never lift my hand with obviously touch a woman and this is not right and that's what I live my, my, my life by every single day and yeah and then I met a teacher called Eric Songwiki. Um he I played against his school in the township I played rugby when I was young you know a lot of my friends were smoking smoking weed, doing drugs, passing away. And obviously when I'm young, I'm also seeing my dad doing all this stuff. I think it's the way to go. So I experimented a little bit, but it wasn't working out for me. So I started playing rugby. And my dad also played rugby. And every single day I would go to school, do my homework at school, finish it, then go to training, get home. If there's a meal, I'll eat or just go straight to bed. My, my grandma used to make me sugar water. Um, in a big jar, in, in, in a big um, jar, and I would drink it. And she would tell me, when you wake up, you'll be like in the morning, you'll be fine. And I would sleep, wake up, no no hunger during the night. I sleep through the night, and I piss my bed every now and then. And then she smacks me. Uh, <laughs> so that kept me going. <laughs> yeah, and and at that time, my bed was the, the cushions. So she would smack me really hard because no one could come visit the house because the cushions were wet. And yeah, and then after a while, um, she passed on. Then my, my aunt had to look after me. She also passed on. My mom also passed on. And then I actually got a scholarship from this teacher called Ericsson Weekly. He took me from another township school because the school fees were 50 rand a year, and I couldn't afford that. And I had. I had no socks. I had never worn socks before. I had no school shoes. I used to wear my aunt's shoes to school. And you can imagine what the other kids looking at me wearing women's shoes, making fun of me. Um, but that, that didn't bug me because I had been through worse, way worse in my life. Then I met this teacher called Eric. He took me to his school. 
Within six months, I got a scholarship to go to grade. I played my first EP trials, and I never could, I didn't have shorts, so I was playing in those silky boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's how um, the teacher from grade actually spotted me. Uh, <laughs> He's like, that one stands out. I want him. <laughs> um, there are actually two other uh, boys that were much better than me in rugby. So we went together to Gray. And, you know, when I got to Gray, I, all I could dream about in the township is being a drug dealer or whatever. Then I go to Gray and I hear these kids. First thing I got there, I got a pair of socks. I was, like, so happy. I had, like, five socks, more than five socks. The other kids were, like, it's just socks, bro. I was like, you, you don't understand. <laughs> and then I got a bed, a bed, my own bed. Like, I, I could sleep on a bed. And, like, all these other kids are like, I'm like, dude, this is, like, this is special for me, you know. And, that, and I sat on my bed and I said, you know what? I want to be a doctor. I want to be something. I want to be successful, you know. All that stuff that I went through helped me to get to this moment that I am today. And... You know, God chose me in my family to be the one, to be the light in the family, you know. And, and you know, I told myself, no matter what, m my grandmother didn't have much. She gave me love and time, and I had the confidence to, to say, you know what, I'm going to be whatever I need to be. I couldn't speak a word of English, you know, and I had to, my, one of my mates had to tell, help me to speak English every day, do homework. I worked hard, I was happy, I make a mistake, I, la I laugh at myself first. And I told myself that when I make it one day, you know, in the township, when you, want, you, you just want to get out, you want to make it for you and your family. And I told to myself, I, when I make it, I want to make a difference in people's lives, you know. Now I have the platform, which is rugby, you know. And I, I don't want to just make good for me, but my family, my brother and sister, adopted my brother and sister. I want to make sure all the other kids in the township see that no matter what your past did, what happened in your family, or how bad, how struggling your, your father or your mother is, you determine your own future. You got to keep working. And, you know, and, and not anyone can make a difference. Anyone, it can be a teacher, whatever you do. It's all about making a difference, even in that one person next to you. It's not about the big crowd at the end of the day. That takes care of it after each other. I take care of you, you can take over the next person. It just spreads out like that. And we just, I think most of the time we are afraid. We, we don't think we deserve all of this stuff. I think no matter who you are, where you're from, you can be whatever you want to be. Just believe and be confident and just say yes to God because he's got the plan already for you. That's what I do every day. When I wake up in the morning before I play, I thank God for all the blessings. I ask forgiveness for any sins that I've caused. And then I, I let him, I tell him, take over when I go to this field. Before I go warm up, I walk off the field, I ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to be present, you know, amongst us on the field with, with all the Christian brothers I have in my team. Then I go in the changing room and I pray and I ask, I tell God, just take over my body, do your work through me. I'm saying yes like make use of me and when everybody's saying you're playing so well i cannot explain to them how i'm playing so well but i know god is doing his work through me you know and yeah and yeah and that's my dream every day to inspire people by the way i play help as many people as i can i donate to my school in the township give them jerseys I can't do everything, but with the little that I can, it makes a difference and put a smile in someone's, feel, in, in someone's face. So that's what I'll keep on doing. And I encourage every single one of you, no matter what you do, where you're from, you can make a change. No, it doesn't matter how small it is. Thank you, guys.